We're on the corner of Pukuatua Street and Tanakai Street, and we're outside the first major city mural that the inner, that was part of the inner city revitalisation. What's the mural about? Please? The mural is telling one of our most famous myths, and it's all about the pink and white terraces, which were. Um, regarded as the eighth wonder of the world and in the last couple of years have been rediscovered at the bottom of Lake Rotomahana. Um, and this is a story that um, many New Zealanders are familiar with and there are some very, very famous paintings of it um, in the museum's art collection. Uh, and this wall was a wall that, because it was our first intersection upgrade, uh, required a significant work, and a significant work to tie in with the two sculptures that have been placed here. As far as um, the work itself, um how do you describe the, the art that's involved? Well, it's a mixture of contemporary. Um, it's it's quite graphic art. We have to my left a large owl, um, Ruru. Now, that's part of seeing and being seen and watched. Um, so that is also part of um, Māori folklore and history. And also the... Um, the art conveys a sense of, of the past as well as using quite modern techniques. It was spray painted, um, so it's not brushwork, and it was done by, again, a couple of well-known um, graffiti artists. So how would you actually describe um, the techniques that have been applied here? The, the techniques are very modern. Um, the two young artists who painted it, um, we had scaffolding up, but they were able to do brushwork, uh, and uh, that allows them to create an artwork of this size and this magnitude, with still a depth and flavour of um, the, uh, the subject matter. And I think that one of the, the strong aspects of this particular artwork is that because it is on a corner, it can be seen from the night market, it's on the verge of where the night market comes in, and, and it's a really important corner for us um, in our inner city. It's a very arresting uh, picture, you, you can't miss it. And um, what sort of judgments have people given it? Well, I think for me, art is never meant to be beige. If everybody likes it or no one comments, we've missed the point. Art is meant to challenge one's perception of how things are. It's meant to recreate an environment of um, questioning and of discovery. So if you have a, an emotion to that art, whether that is you love it or you hate it or you love bits of it, then the artwork has been successful. Because if it stops and makes you think either... I love that bit because, or I wouldn't like that in um, um, my um, environment because of a bunch of other reasons, then you've actually engaged with it. And the point of art is to make people stop and engage and to challenge their perceived thinking and to challenge their perceptions about the place of art in our lives. Yes, there are a number of iconic pictures of the terraces, aren't there? Yes, there and are. And I think, you know, we mostly have those in the back of our mind when we think of them. And they just haven't transferred them to the wall, have they? No, they haven't. And, you know, we've got a hot pink here used, um, what you could say, uh, almost a lolly pink. So it's a very vivid um, street art. This is very much street art. And for me, that's perfect because it is in the street. This is an old building. Um, and part of choosing, when we choose artworks, um, you must recognise the site. You must recognise uh, the building context of it and the longevity of that building. So um, all of those things were taken in consideration in the choice of this artwork. And again, it was the External Reference Committee that looked at all the, the um, artworks that came in and analysed them against that background of um, the site, the context and also um, cost comes into it too.